As I said at the beginning of this chapter, the first lecture, Mendel's work is the foundation for what we think of as modern genetics. Over the past century and a half, we have found that there are exceptions to his rules, exceptions to his concepts. Where things are not truly dominant recessive. Where things just don't work quite the way Mendel found with his pea plants. Now, as I said in the first lecture, Mendel, you know, lucked out. There was somebody up on high looking down on him favorably because the pea plants he chose, the characters, the traits he chose to count and to study. Come to find out, they're all on different chromosomes. And there are only two alleles, two versions, two flavors for every one of those genes. Turns out, though, most things don't quite follow Mendelian genetics. There's going to be alternatives. There's going to be exceptions to the rules. What happens when you really don't have a truly dominant, truly recessive, you know, versions, alleles? What happens when there's more than two alleles? What happens when there's multiple phenotypes that are going to be impacted by uh, one gene? So we now have a modern version of Mendelian genetics. We have an expanded view of how things work, how genes are passed on, how genes, the genotype, affects the phenotype. First one off the mark is what we now call complete dominance. Okay, This is the traditional Mendelian genetics, purple flower, white flower, green versus yellow. Then we also have here an incomplete dominance. Well, with Mendelian, you know, the flower, you know, the complete dominance, the allele for purple made a working enzyme. The allele for white, no functioning protein, no functioning enzyme, no pigment made. Well, what happens with in, if both alleles actually do make pigment? Well, then you have what's referred to as incomplete dominance. One allele does not control the phenotype. Both alleles will contribute, and the offspring's phenotype is going to be somewhere in between the two. Have an example on that in the next slide. And then there's codominance. Well, turns out the alleles are truly independent of each other, and they both make, and the resulting phenotype will have both of them equally expressed. With the incomplete dominance, a great example of this is snapdragons. Okay, you take a red snapdragon flower, a red plant with red flowers, and another snapdragon with white flowers. Hybridize, pollinate, cross those. The F1 generation, pink. Pink. Where did that come from? Well, pink. Finger paints, back when you were a little kid. Red paint, white paint, gives you pink paint. Incomplete says that both the red and the white will equally affect the phenotype. When you take the F1 generations, the pinks, and you hybridize them against each other, you get something different. The outcome. For every one white, there is one red, and then there will be two pinks. Incomplete. Neither allele truly dominant over the, the other. They both equally contribute, and the offspring will be somewhere in between the two. Now, this notice I have right here. Look at the nomenclature here. See 
superscript W. C superscript R. This is a second way geneticists have of describing genotypes. First way, uppercase, lowercase letter. Uppercase, lowercase should tell you that it is uh, complete dominance, Mendelian genetics. Letter with a superscript letter, CRCW, should tell you that this could be an incomplete dominance thing. RW, red, white, C, color. The gene C is the gene that controls color. The alleles R or W. CRCR, as we see right here, gives you a red flower. CW, CW gives you white. The heterozygous, CRCW, gives you pink. A codominance, where all the alleles equally contribute. And they will all be, you know, whatever the allele is present, will also affect the phenotype. Great example of this is your blood type. A, B, O, A, B. I'm not going to worry about the positive negative for this. The gene for blood type is I. I, the gene I, calls for certain carbohydrate shapes to be expressed on the surface of red blood cells. A, allele A has a different shape than allele B. There's also a third option, little i. Little i, also known as, which will, you know, means that no carbohydrate will be expressed. It's a non-functioning gene. So IA gives you this shape, IB gives you that shape. Somebody who has a blood type of A, their genotypes are either IA, IA, or IA, little i. IA makes A, the little i makes nothing, so only thing present is the A carbohydrates. B, IB, 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 little i. Again, little i means nothing made. IB, that's it. If you're AB, means you are IA, IB, and both the A and the I will be, or A and the B will be expressed equally on the surface of your proteins. If your blood group O, means you are homozygous little i little i means you make no carbohydrates another exemption to the rule what if there's more than one allele or more than two alleles sorry mendel like i said lucked out his characters his genes he was discussing were all two alleles what if there's more Great example, boom, fur color in rabbits. The gene C is for fur color. The different alleles, C, CH, H, and then lowercase c. So that's one, two, three, four alleles. And it turns out there is a hierarchy in who is dominant to who. Uppercase C is dominant to CCH. CCH is dominant to CH. CH is dominant to C. So when you go and you look, homozygous big C, big C, gives you brown fur. CHCH, the chinchilla, CHCH, HH, white with black, and then lowercase c, lowercase c, 
albino, white. Because there is a hierarchy, here this example the artist drew, they are all homozygous, but if they were, say like, big C, big C, little h, even though the little C H or the H is the Himalayan, the big C big, the big C overrides because it's dominant. It means that rabbit will be brown. And then another exception to the rule: one gene, multiple phenotypes. Homeotic mutants. Homeotic genes are genes that are responsible for fetal development. They only occur, they only happen during fetal development, and then after that, they're no longer needed. A lot of times, homeotic, you know, genes will be the ones that tell the developing fetus up, down, left, right, front, back. So that way, two arms, two legs. Great example is right here. The Antipeda mutant, instead of antenna, it actually has legs growing out its head. One gene mutation led to complete abnormal fetal development. Exception.